Hi, this is Jerry Taylor Swade, and welcome to another in the series of Couple with the Queen podcast. Today, I am pretty proud of this one, actually, because I was interviewed by another podcaster, and it's actually a husband and wife, Josiah and Madeline Zabuentes, and they are with Lippy Supply Podcast, and they were very interested to hear my story as a Senegens distributor and also my journey as a direct seller for 19 years actually now. I would love for you to listen to this podcast. It's actually kind of long because I tell a lot of stories. If you love stories and if you'd like to hear some of the stories I have to tell, some of them I haven't thought about for a long time, please join me and listen in. If you enjoy what you heard or if you learned something from it, please comment and also subscribe to my podcast for future episodes. Thank you so much. This is Josiah. And this is Madeline. And welcome to the Lippy Supply Podcast. This podcast is meant to encourage and inspire women to take action and build a successful business. In this episode, Jerry Taylor Swade joins us to talk about everything in her 19-year journey as a LipSense distributor and the first ever queen of Cinegents. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lippy Supply Podcast and we are so excited uh, that our guest this week has joined us um, just to give a little bit of information about our guest. She is a 19-year distributor uh, and the first queen ever of Cinegents and the only queen for 14 years uh, has been instrumental in introducing and opening five countries, traveled to Australia, Canada, Puerto Rico, Brazil, the UK, and there's so much more that we'll talk about, but we are so excited to have Jerry Taylor Swade with us. Jerry, thank you so much for taking time out of your, your schedule to sit down with us and welcome to the, to the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm super happy to be here and excited that you asked me to do this podcast. So I, uh, I love it. I love this business and everything about <laughs> and it. And you also have a podcast too, correct? I do. I have a podcast. It's called Cuppa with the Queen, C-U-P-P-A, Cuppa with the Queen, like you're yeah. sitting down and having yep. a cup of tea yep. with the Queen. <laughs> and the reason why I call it that is because my Australian team... And the girls down in Australia are the ones that gave me the idea because some of them came to visit me in my house in the States, and they asked me one day to sit down and have a cuppa. And I said, what <laughs> is that? And they, <laughs> and they said, you know, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee where we just sit down and talk. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm a queen in the yeah. company. And what is a podcast? You're just sitting down and talking to your yeah. friends or, or people that you're trying to you know, disseminate information yeah. yep. to. So I thought that would be a great name for them. Yeah, podcast. it's an awesome name for the podcast. And for those listening, I'm sure by the end of this episode, they're going to be like, well, we want more Jerry. Where do we get more? <laughs> That's where you can get more. It's on iTunes and iHeartRadio right now. But we're so excited that you took time to, uh, to come on our show, on our, part, our, our podcast, and, and have a couple with us. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, and I'm having mine right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, before we kind of get into uh, the details, for those that are listening that you might they might be new to you or who you are, or those listening who know who you are but might not know much about you, um, tell us a little bit about um, kind of a 30,000-foot view. What's life like for you, who you are, what you're involved in, so on and so forth, and then we'll kind of go into the details uh, a little bit deeper. Well, I am a wife and a mother of two. My son is 37, and my daughter is 34, and I'm a Mima of four, <laughs> and my grandson, my oldest grandson is 13, and my youngest grandson is three, and I have a little girl right in the middle. She's five, and another grandson that's nine, and they all are super blessings to me. I Love, love, love. I can't tell you how much I love being a Mima. And it's really changed the way I think about things since I started having grandchildren. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. So 
19 year distributor that that is crazy so t- take us back to um what what probably seems like a, a lifetime ago 1999 before you discovered the company before you were kind of recruited by Joni personally what was what was your life like before you discovered uh Cinegen I have been a jack of all trades and a master of some <laughs> in my That's previous awesome. life yeah. And I have done a lot of things. I was in the beauty industry. I, I worked in a salon for 10 years. I was a makeup artist, a freelance makeup artist for five. And then my during that time, I was married before, and my husband was going to medical school. And once he got out of medical school, we decided to open our own clinic. So I was the, I mean, we did it from scratch. We didn't know what we were doing. So we started a clinic and had to figure out how to do it and how to market mm-hmm. it and all of that. And so I was the office manager and we were having children and trying to juggle all of that. <laughs> and it was really difficult, uh, really difficult because we were trying to build a business and try to juggle being a mom and a wife and everything to everybody at the same yeah. time. It was really yeah. hard. And which is, which was a lot of people experience mm-hmm. that. Right. And then, I uh, unfortunately got divorced after 20 years, and in the meantime, my kids were older. My daughter was 11, and my son was a teenager, and I had to figure out what to do and how to survive and what was I going to do in the future, and so I started a construction company. (laughs) Why? I had no clue because I didn't know anything about it just seemed like a good idea at the time, right? But... Yeah, it seemed like, and I and I love design, and I I I met a guy who was a master builder, and we went into business together, and we built a business up to a million dollars in one year. Wow! So we were riding high on the hog, and in the meantime, I was also a um, uh, a cheerleading coach, and I was a president of a theater group. Mm. And so I had teenagers, I was busy, and I really was overwhelmed. And then I decided to start a boutique. So in order to start the boutique, I needed to go down to L.A. to the L.A. gift market, which is a wholesale buying gift market for people that have stores. And so I went down there, and that's where I met Joni for the first time. I had not signed the lease for the boutique yet, but I already had my logo. I had my business name already, my business license and all that. And I was looking at a couple places to sign the lease. And when I met Joni and saw LipSense, I had been in the industry. So I knew there was no lip stick that stayed on all day like (laughs) she said and like the sign said. And so... We, I tried it. She said, just go have lunch and see what you think. And I'm like, okay, I wow. will. So I went, I always wore red lip and red nails at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I went and had lunch and ate a hamburger and the, my lipstick was not all, all over the bun. <laughs> I didn't have any on my napkin. And I'm like, oh, MG, I need this stuff. I went in the bathroom to wash my hands after eating. I looked in the mirror, and my lips looked exactly the same as when I first put it on. And I literally said out loud, oh, my God, this stuff really works. I have got to get this. And the girl that was standing next to me in the bathroom washing her hands said, what? And I said, this lipstick, I just ate a hamburger, and it stayed on. She goes, I need that. And I said, so do I. Let's go get Mm -hmm. some. Yeah. So I grabbed her hand and took her with me, and I had no idea I was wowing, and I had no idea that I was doing what we're supposed to do is open our mouths and tell people what we have and what we're doing. I just knew that every woman in America would want this, and I was going to have it. And so I went back, and I said, because it's a wholesale buying show, I said, what's your minimum? Because I was told to say that. And she said, well, you can buy one set for yourself retail dollar-wise which was $45 at the time, or you can sign up to be a distributor so you can buy a hotel. And I said, sign me up. Mm. And she said, you mean right now? And I said, yeah, <laughs> right now. So she gave me an application 
you know I'm an OG, so that means that we had no yeah. internet, we had yeah. nothing. So she gave me a piece and of paper, and, paper. and I signed the agreement. Huh. And she said, "Weren't you a makeup artist?" And I said, "Yes." And she goes, "I need you." She grabbed my hand, literally pulled me behind the booth and said, I need you to work today. Oh, my gosh. Right I'm like, sure. <laughs> so that's how I started. Oh that my is crazy. So that was um, back when Joni was just starting to build it, correct? It was the very first time. I didn't yeah. know this. It was the very first time Cenogens had ever been shown in public. My ever. Wow. And guess what? That date is tomorrow. Oh, wow. really? My... <laughs> Wow. That's crazy. My anniversary is tomorrow. Oh my gosh. That is that is such a crazy story. That's the kind of stuff you see I mean, you know, written for movies or sitcoms mm-hmm. or TV shows where you know you go and the girl eats a cheeseburger and then it suddenly has this revelatory moment of I need this lipstick and tells everyone <laughs> around her. So that yeah. wow, that is so cool. And everything everything in my life changed. I called my husband and I said I'm not going to do a boutique. He said, what? <laughs> I said, I'm going to sell lipstick. Mm-hmm. He said, you're going to do yeah. what? <laughs> and I said, I'm going to sell lipstick. And he said, trust, I said, trust me, you're going to love it because it won't kiss off on you. And I wore red lipstick, mm-hmm. yes. remember? So he said, okay, yeah. that sounds good to me. <laughs> and then at the end, at the end of that day, Joni said to me, I'm going to Chicago in three days and I have no one to go with me. But my sister, can you go with us? Wow. And I said, well, I need to talk to my husband, but I think I can move my schedule around. Um, and she goes, but I can't afford to pay you. You have to go yourself. Right. And and I'm like, uh, okay. Because Joni had zero money. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm talking zero <clears throat> yeah. money. And so I saw... I saw the opportunity and I jumped on it and I'm like, I'm going to do this. And I, I knew I was going to do it. So I just bought a ticket, even though it cost me a fortune because it was only three days right. from then. And I went to Chicago and I did the whole trade show and I started signing people up. I didn't understand anything about the industry of direct sales. Yeah. I didn't really understand network marketing or MLM. Yeah. I just knew that you had to sign up to be able to buy a wholesale. That's all right. I knew. And that's, that's what I told people. And my enthusiasm is what got me started because I didn't know anything about anything. And we had no training. Joni handed me a baggie <laughs> with six lip, col- lip mm-hmm. colors and said, let me know when you're successful. That, that was my training. <laughs> wow. You know, I went to a trade show and I listened to her. And then after that, I went back to Washington State. I was on my own. Wow. I, I was totally on my own. We had zero... Nothing. We didn't have a website. We didn't have anything. We had no printed material. I had to make up all my own stuff. I had to print out my own directions on how to use the product. I didn't, I, I just, I knew that I wanted to do it. So I had to figure Mm -hmm. out a way. So how did you start, um, kind of building a team? I mean, you didn't have any guide or direction. So what did you start to do to start recruiting people and getting the product out there, wowing people? telling people what I mm-hmm. had and what I did and showing them. And it was one-on-one, face-to-face, one-on-one. There was no other way <laughs> yeah. to do it. And Joni told us we needed to do trade shows. So I started okay. looking and trying to find local local things that I could go to, you know, little events, um, church bazaars, um, home shows in the area. I knew about home shows because I was a contractor. So I figured I could sell at home shows, and so that's what I started doing. And I just started telling people one on one, face to face. That's that's we didn't have yeah, the internet, no, yeah. so there was no other way to yeah. do it. Yeah, trade uh, trade shows were essentially the the Facebook marketplace of that time, right? So yeah. it's all face to face interaction. Yeah. Which yeah. that that is, I mean, I think now because we're so used to and rely on. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Facebook, the thought of actually setting up a booth in person and having that be the only way, not just a supplementary way of of yeah. selling a product that can that would probably seem daunting if you went to someone today and said, "Okay, no Facebook. You're just gonna you're gonna run the circuit and you're gonna go to trade shows and mm-hmm. and you're gonna you're gonna sling the stuff in person." So it was yeah, yeah. It was tough. I mean, I I traveled all the time. 
there was literally, I, I finally um, hired someone to run the construction business and so that I could be on the road because after about a year and a half, I'm like, you know what? If I really work this business, I think I could really do something with that. I really think I could make something out yeah. of this. And I had started getting commissions checked. My com- first commission check was $37. I had no clue what it was. <laughs> I thought that I had overpaid on my my order because we didn't we couldn't they didn't take credit cards we had to send in literally in the mail a check wow. to pay for our okay. product and so i thought that i had added up wrong and and i thought i didn't know what this was about mm-hmm. and so then when i started figuring it out the one big moment the aha moment the light bulb yeah. moment for me was about a year and a half into it when Joni called me and said do you want the good news or the bad news <laughs> I'm like, well, tell me the bad news yeah. first. She goes, well, your commission check would have been about $1,500 this month. I'm like, what? And she said, yeah, but you didn't place an order above 300 PV. Uh, and I'm like, we're not, we weren't supposed to place an order above 300 yeah. PV. We were, at the time, it was 200 PV. But little did I know, because I wasn't paying attention to my business, it was just a hobby for me that they had raised it to 300 PV and actually started kicking in the compensation plan that we know now today, wow. which we didn't have back then. We didn't have five levels because there was no distributor. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I, and so she said, you need to start placing at least a 300 PV every month from now on. And you need to learn a compensation plan so you can make money. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I guess I really do. And so that's when I really started realizing that I needed to know what I was doing. I needed to really figure this out because I can really make money at this if I, if I wanted to. And if I knew how to do it, I mean, I could really make money. So that's when I started really cracking down and becoming knowledgeable about the business of Senegens, but also the business of direct sales. And I started traveling all over the country, and it literally got to the point where I had no idea where I was. Like, I would wake up in the morning (laughs) in a hotel room, and I wouldn't open my eyes yet, but I would be awake, and I would try to remember where I was at. Wow. Because I had been in so many places, and the story that I love to tell is the fact that we had been, I had been in Memphis. I had done a trade show in Memphis. I done, I had done the women's show in Memphis and it was on my birthday. But a couple years later, I met someone and they said, I met you the first time in Memphis. And I said, I've never been to Memphis. <laughs> and she said, yes, you have, because I met you at the women's show at Memphis. That's when I signed up to be a distributor. And I said, I've never been to Memphis. And she goes, yes, you have. <laughs> and my friend said, Jerry, you were there for your birthday for heaven's <laughs> sake two years wow. ago. Like, yeah. seriously, I, I did not remember because I was running so fast yeah. and so furious. Yeah. I never looked yeah. back. I just kept looking forward. Yeah. The hotel rooms all look the same. When you're, when you're in enough of them, they're all the same. You know, it's, it doesn't really matter what city. Right. It's just... It's the same Hilton in every city, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, right, yeah. Right. So, so talk to us a little bit about you know you you literally got in on the ground level of of this business of Cinegens, and um, you yeah. you'd said you know there wasn't a lot of the the tiers because there were no distributors. So, what was it like? I mean, were you were you the first or one of the first distributors to sign up? And when did you? Uh, rank queen and was that something that was kind of made for how well you were doing or was that did that already exist did the title of queen already exist or is that something that was Joni was like well I think we're going to implement these now and now you're a queen how did that work you know since it was such a ground level thing okay okay well first of all there was no ranking for queen until together in 2001 she called the top five distributors at the time she called us on the phone and she said i need you to come to palm springs on this date and of course we had to pay our own way because she had no money (laughs) and um and so we went 
um, to Palm Springs, she said, it's going to be a working weekend. I need your help. So we sat down in a conference table in Palm Springs, and for the whole weekend, we worked out these kind of details. Mm -hmm. And she said, one of the things we need to figure out is how do we give recognition to the distributors that are achieving levels in the company? Mm -hmm. Other, like, for instance, she was in Mary Kay before, so those were, they were called you know, directors, senior directors, mm -hmm. uh, regional directors, national directors, you know, those kind of names. Mary Kay was that, she was that, but then there was like Amway and they had like Diamond and Double Diamond and Ruby and, you know, all that. And, um, and they had managing directors and other companies and things. So those were titles right. that showed what you had achieved. But she said, I don't want to name it the same as anyone else has ever had before. We need to come up with something different. And she said, I've been seriously thinking about this, and I think we need to name our achievement levels royalty names. Mm -hmm. And we're like, what do you mean, royalty <laughs> names? And she says, you know, like princess. And one of the leaders was a Jewish businesswoman, mm -hmm. and she said, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I always accused of being a Jewish princess, and I'm not going to be called a princess in this company. Right. And, um, and she said, okay, well, let me hear me out. Hear me out. So she said, the reason why I think so is because Princess Diana had just died. Oh. And she said, when you think of Princess Diana, what do you think of? What do you picture in your mind besides her beauty? And, you, you know, you can see yeah, her, her yeah. face. But what do you think of when descriptive words, what do you think of? She's beautiful, but she's beautiful inside yeah. and out. She is, a, she is a role yeah. model. She is a leader. <laughs> People look up to her. She has grace. And very you know, elegant. She is yes. um, very elegant. She gives. She cares. She is um, philanthropic. She's all of those yeah. things. That's what I see my distributors like. That's, that's how I want to see mm -hmm. every single distributor wow. that comes into our company that are here now and that are going to come into the yeah. future. And we're like, okay, all right, <laughs> let's figure these yeah. names out. And so that's how we figured it out. We figured out Maiden and, um, you know, the road to royalty and then royalty and then, you know, the Maiden, the royal, yeah, all of those yeah. names. Um, we figured it out and we listed them. Joni was taking notes and we were throwing them out there and then Crown Princess and then Queen. But we never, like $5 million, she's the one that set the numbers. Right. Oh, after we met that day, they weren't set okay. that day, and so we never saw it again. We never, we never knew that we were achieving these levels because it was so new. Right. And so um, we didn't have a newsletter. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have a way to track anything. So none of us knew if we were achieving them or mm -hmm. not. And Joni called me. Uh, she called me, let's see, uh, I was 2002, the seminar 2002 when I was crown queen. So she called me around January or February and said, you need to bring a gown and you need it to be the most beautiful gown you've ever worn before in your life. <laughs> and I said, why? And she said, trust me, you're going to be, you're going to want to know. You're going to want to be gorgeous. I'm like, okay. She didn't want to tell me. <laughs> so... When I got to seminar, she said, I need you to come in a day early because we need to do some photos. And I'm like, okay. So that's when I found out that I had made queen. Wow. And they, they didn't crown me because they didn't have crowns at the time. <laughs> they didn't give me a crown. I, and Joni said, you're going to have to go buy a crown. Okay? <laughs> I'm like, okay. That's awesome. Like, <laughs> oh, that is so funny. She had yeah. no money. She had no yeah. money. <laughs> That's so funny. So, so I said, so I said, well, what kind of a crown? She goes, a big one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the biggest one you can find. So, yeah. Um, so that's how I. That's how it was. And you know, after that, I nobody uh, nobody thought they could ever achieve that level. It mm -hmm. was. 
I always say this because it's so true. It's like in the Olympics, and I have a podcast about this. It's about it's like the Olympics when someone breaks a barrier of some kind, someone breaks a record of some kind, and then no one thinks that they can ever break that record again. Yeah. And for years, nobody does. Yep. Nobody breaks the record because they nobody thinks it can ever be yep. done. Yep. Right. And then, and then someone finally breaks that record. Yeah. And then right after that, a whole bunch of people break that record and, and make new yeah. records. And yeah. that's exactly what happened with me at Cinegen. I was the only queen for 14 years. <laughs> and then people started breaking the records and oh my gosh, did they break those yeah. records. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So what was, um, you said was the first seminar in 2002? No, it wasn't the first. first out, the first seminar, the first seminar ever was in 2000, but it wasn't called seminar yet. It was just a celebration of our first year of business. Okay. And it was in the parking lot in under a tent. Wow. Wow. In the parking lot of this Senegens building that just had opened up. Okay. Before that, it was in Joni's trailer. Right. And so it was just in a parking lot, and she had hired a DJ, and we had a little bit of food, and we had a few recognition things, and that was it. And that was our first so-called seminar. The next one was our first official seminar, yeah. and then... In, that was in 2001, and then 2002 is when I became okay. queen. How many distributors were at the first seminar that you know wasn't called seminar yet? But how many of you, how many were, were there in that parking lot under that tent? Like, uh, 25, wow. 30, maybe. Wow. Mm-hmm. And were you was was seminar something also that Joni had an idea for that she called you guys in to help with, or was that just something that she was like, hey, we're just gonna get together and do this because it's a you know, at that point, it was just a small celebration, so maybe not as much planning needed. How were you involved with making seminar into what it has become uh, as we know today? No, okay. no, 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 no. It was just Joni and her peeps that she had working okay. with her. They they're the ones that did it, and then the next year she had hired a couple staff people um, that helped her, and they were kind of the original corporate yeah. people. And they've left since then, but I'm still friends with all of them. I mm-hmm. still am in contact with all of them. And because they were they were helping get the company started like I was. We were all pioneers yeah. together. And so we, we I kept in touch, but Joni started establishing team and she went through a lot of team members. I mean from a corporate standpoint. Right. She's gone through a mm-hmm. lot over the years. Like I'm serious, Joni has the stick to itness, but she also had a vision that she would not let die no matter what came right. her way. She kept going, and that's the key for me as a distributor, same as her as the corporate owner of the co- corporation. You cannot let the negative, mm-hmm. you cannot let people that try to mess your dream up, you cannot let any of that happen. You have to keep going. If you be believe, if you have decided that this is what you're going to do. Joni decided she had a vision. She was not going to let anybody get in her way of that vision. And me as a distributor, a pioneer distributor, or any distributor, it's the same no matter if you just started yesterday. You have decided that this is what you're going to do, and you need to learn how to do it. You need to figure it out, and you cannot let anyone get in the way. I mean, in a negative way. You can't let anybody... Steal your dream. You can't let anybody talk you out of it. If you know in your heart that this is what you're supposed to do and you feel a gut level, this is what you're supposed to do, you have to keep on keeping on no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Were there times, because you've been a distributor for 19 years, and I'm sure just with anyone who's building their own business, um, just there were times where you were doubting that, I don't know if this is going to be successful um you know and it's gone on for such a long time I don't know if we're ever going to arrive how did you overcome those doubts well first of all I'm going to correct you and say you've never arrived Mm -hmm. right ever and because you keep learning no matter what and Joni will tell you she has not arrived Mm -hmm. she has 
realized a lot of her dream, but she has way, way more dream that she still has and more vision that she's still working yeah. on. So even though a lot of people look at her and say, well, baby, you've arrived. You've yeah. got your own plane. You travel the world, blah, blah, blah. But Joni feels very thankful for where she's at, but she's not done. She has a lot to do, and I feel the same mm -hmm. way. But when you are your own, that's the hardest thing about being an entrepreneur. It's the hardest thing about being a distributor in a direct sales company or in an MLM or, or a network marketing company. It's all the same. It's you, baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. You cannot blame anybody else if you fail. You have to blame yourself because you didn't do something right and you didn't figure out how to do it right. You didn't figure out how to get past the challenges. You didn't figure out how to get past the obstacles. And everybody has them. <clears throat> They're all different, but everybody has them. And I think the hardest thing is to keep on track, is keep moving forward. And to, I think a lot of the challenge is to keep motivated over the yeah. years. How do you keep motivated? You have to figure out ways because you will have down times. You will have times when you say, screw this. <laughs> And then, and then you have to say to yourself, wait, I'm not going to let the stinking <clears throat> thinking control yeah. me. I have got to stop. And literally, this is what I do, literally. I have stopped so many times in my house. Mm -hmm. I've raised my hand to God, who is my God. Mm -hmm. And I say, Lord, I know you've blessed me and I know you've given me this opportunity but I have to do this. I'm the one that has to keep doing. I'm the one that has to pick up the phone. I'm the one that has to go out and meet new people. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that has to change my attitude. I'm the one that has to feed my brain. I'm the one that has to keep doing this every day, every day, every day, every mm -hmm. day. And that is the challenge. That's, the, I think, the biggest challenge of being in direct sales. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And I think it's it's really cool as you're, you know, talking about Joni as you knew her in, in, in 1999 and in, in, in the beginning how she was like, hey, pay your own way because she didn't have any money. You need to buy your own crown because she didn't have any money. I think it's a, it's a funny kind of antidote story now because looking at, you know, but in retrospect where things are at now. But I think, you know, for those that are listening, for distributors that are listening that are, are new – um, are struggling or if even if you're listening and thinking about signing up know that the person that founded the product that you're selling started mm -hmm. with literally nothing as well so yeah. it's really cool to be a part of a company where the boss has has been in your shoes and has can empathize and you can see you know through her story that it's possible to become a success when you don't have anything when you start uh, I think that I think that's a really cool thing to keep in mind that maybe a lot of distributors might not think about because, like you said, you you see you know Joni now and it's it's easy to forget or not to see the twenty years of work that it's ta taken to get to the position where she's at. So I I agree with you so much. I mean, there was a time when we would do I did some trade shows with Joni herself. And literally, she would borrow money from me. She had no cash. She never had cash. And she would say, I'll pay you back, which she never did. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one time, she had to borrow money from me because she couldn't make it. She needed to borrow money from me. And there was a time when I went through my divorce that I had to borrow money from yeah. her. I could not wait for my commission mm -hmm. check. Because I needed money, and I called her. I said, Joni, I've got to borrow money. I, I can't make it through this month unless I borrow money. And she gave me the money, and then I paid her back. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we help each other. That's what, that's, what, that's what started the Senate Sisterhood. That's where it started yeah. is loving each other and lifting each other up and empowering each other and helping each other and keeping each other motivated to keep going. That's where the Senate Sisterhood started. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's such a it's a paradigm shift. I think in any kind of sales or or business, um, you know, whether it's MLM or whether it's whatever your any any business endeavor, there's a there's a tendency to kind of draw lines in the sand and 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 think it's you know your business versus the other person or you versus another distributor in the area instead of thinking about you know 
coming up alongside and helping each other and realizing that there's really enough, there's enough, you know, food for everybody out there, but you know, there's no reason to get into this, you know, you versus the other distributor mentality, which I think competition, because you're working towards goals in MLM, I think there's a tes- uh, a tendency to sometimes let the competition take away from the, the, the truth that it's just about the sisterhood and the camaraderie of it all, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Well, I think that other multi-level marketing companies have it worse than yeah. we do because we have we have worked on a culture. We have established a culture where yes, we're in competition, but we're in friendly competition. And there's enough faces and lips out there, yes. trust me. <laughs> and so we don't have to backbite each other. We don't have to backstab each other. We don't have to have a one up on someone because there's enough to go around. Like you said, there's enough abundance to go around and it's the difference between your thinking. Are you thinking in an abundance kind of way or are you thinking in a scarcity kind of way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. I I can, I mean, I'm obviously not involved in in synergies necessarily, but I am, you know, I'm, I'm a business owner building another business and it's easy to get, into that scarcity mindset and then you end up operating out of fear instead of out of the provision that is, is out there for you. Right. So mm-hmm. I want to talk to you about how you've, you know, kept up with the times and how things have changed with social media and everything moving to, you know, an internet based back office for Synergence and just kind of how things have changed over the last 19 years of being a distributor. I want to talk to you a little bit since, you know, you got it on the ground level and Obviously, the company has has changed and evolved in ways that you or Joni probably couldn't foresee, or maybe Joni did, and that's why we're here. That you know she had the vision. So, but what are some of the obstacles that you encountered as the business started to the industry started to grow and and change, and Synergence had you know kind of evolved into what it is? What are some of the obstacles you encountered along the way? Whether it was you know the trade show grind or the inter- introducing the internet and all of that kind of medium into the whole formula. Uh, talk to us a little about some of, uh, some of that process as you've seen things change through the years. It's real. It was really, you know, you have to learn. You have to keep learning. You have to keep growing. You can't think that you've arrived and you can't think that you're only going to do it a certain way. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't realize that this, business model of direct sales is probably the best tool to grow personally of any tool. Out. I mean, it's the best place. It's the best playground, so to speak, to really, really grow into the person that God created you to be mm-hmm. because you have to learn. You have to do new things. You have to try new things. You have to figure out what works and what doesn't. And you know, we started out at trade shows. I love doing trade shows. I love, yeah. I love many people. I love traveling. And yeah, it's a grind and all that, but I really liked it. Yeah. But then when Leslie Boyd Bradley came on board <laughs> and she said, okay, you guys, it's time to change. Now, Joni knew that, that she told us there's going to be a time, girls, when it's going to change. The business model has to change because – Trade shows are not duplicatable for the masses that are going to be coming into the business. And so we have to teach people how to build in their own backyard. We have to teach them how to do a, a, a party. And I'm like, I hate the word party because it reminded <laughs> me of Tupperware. Yes. And I'm like, can we just call it, let's just get together and play makeup. And that's where this, the saying, I'm the one that came up with that saying. Mm-hmm. Let's just get together and play makeup because it takes the pressure off of hosting a party, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. And and but I didn't want to change. I said no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not doing those. <laughs> I'm not going to be a. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to people's houses. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And Leslie said, "You either change or you die." Hmm. And when she looked at me and said that, I'm like, "I'm not going to die." I am going to learn because I am not going to die. I I have worked too damn hard. I am not going to die. I've got to, I got to figure out a way. I got to figure out this new way of doing it. And so I started teaching myself how to do, um, trade. I mean, going from trade shows to doing home demos. And when I first did my first home demo, 
I'm like, this is fun. Yeah. This is mm-hmm. like a mini trade show in a way. Yeah. And I liked it. I thought it was really fun and it was more personable. And you had you got more time to spend with each of your people that you met, the customers that you made. Right. And so I started changing and shifting my thinking. And that shifting in your thinking is what it takes. You've got to. And then my first, I didn't even know how to turn on a computer. My son, who was seven years old at the time, they had computers in their school. And so when I first bought my first computer, he showed me how to turn it on. I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't know the difference between a web address and an email. I, I didn't know anything about anything. Mm-hmm. And so I sent my very first email to another distributor. I found out what her email was. And I called her on the phone, and I said, do you have an email? And she said, yes. And I said, what is it? I'm going to send you an email. And I was so proud of myself when I sent my first email. <laughs> wow. You know? And yeah. I didn't – and we faxed everything. Yeah. We did everything by fax. And that was pretty cool to be able to fax in our orders instead of sending them in the mail. Yeah. And then, you know, then um, it, it was just – you have to learn. And, you know, this whole social media and all that stuff, like, I had to learn how to do everything, and there was no one to teach me. There yeah. was no – Joni had no systems in place. There was no training whatsoever, and she started writing yeah. the system. She started writing the training manual, she, and it, it took years and years and years and years, and only two years ago when she stood on stage, and you might have been there at seminar, she said – I feel so good because now I can relax a little bit because all the systems are in place. Yeah. Yeah. That was only two years ago. Wow. Wow. So all the systems that we have now, it's so much easier to become a distributor (laughs) now. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. Yeah. You have everything. I know. You have everything you need to be successful. There's nothing that's not there. Yeah. Yeah. You have all the training. You have access to everything. You've got YouTube. I I learned how to do YouTube. I'm like, okay, I need to learn how to do YouTube. It yeah. looks like that's going to be maybe the future of, of doing business. So I got to learn how to do it. I never knew what I was doing. Uh, my first YouTube videos are horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't yeah. know you had to have lighting. I didn't yeah. know that you had to have good sound. I didn't know any of that. And then you know you just learn as you go. And then as far as my podcast goes. I thought to myself, in order to be able to reach the millennials in a way to mm-hmm. where they will hear what you're saying, yep. mm-hmm. you've got to do podcasts because they listen to podcasts constantly. They've got their ear buds in their ear yep. 24-7 practically. Yep. And so I'm like, I need to do a podcast because I want to get mm-hmm. the message out. I want to get how amazing this business model and Cenogens is. I want to get it out to the new distributors that come on board. I want yeah. them to, to have a way to listen and, and it be, you know, um, it's sort of intimate when you're talking into somebody's ear, sort of yeah. intimate, you know? Oh, yeah, totally. And I wanted to learn how to do it, so I decided I'm going to do a podcast. Okay, how the hell do I do that? I don't <laughs> know, but I'll figure it out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. So, and and how's, how's that gone as far as, you know, uh, and I, in particular, the podcast, as far as like the followers, subscribers, has it been something that has has caught traction for you and, and the YouTube videos and all of those new mediums that, you're, that you've decided to learn? Has that? I mean, I have to say her podcast is the inspiration that gave us to do this podcast. Yeah. So there's one. Yeah. <laughs> well, say, I'll say, you know what? That is so, I'm blessed by that. You know why? Because, oh, thank you, because mm-hmm. I, I love what I do, and I love to inspire yeah. and to uplift and motivate people to get out there and be the best that they can be. And for me to have inspired you to do this podcast, that, that's the best blessing I could ever have. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so thank you for sharing that. And, you know, am I mad that you copied me? No. Because right. your podcast is way different than mine. Yeah. There's enough people, there's enough ears out there for us to have listened to us. Yeah. And um, I don't know how my podcast is doing. I don't, I'm not a numbers person, so yeah. I never track anything. I mm-hmm. just put it out there. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you awesome. know, I know there's people listening. Yeah. I know there is because at 
that seminar this last year, you know, we had 8,000 distributors walking around the hallways, and it was crowded. We, I felt like cattle moving from one class <laughs> to the next. And I was talking to somebody that was next to me, and someone said, Jerry, Taylor Swade, and I turned around, and she said, oh, my gosh, I heard your voice first. Yeah. Yeah. And realized it was you because of your podcast, and i that's how I knew it was you. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I didn't realize people were listening to my podcast. I had no idea. I just put it out there. I don't... I don't look to see how many people listen or whatever. I don't even know if you can do that. I guess you can, but yeah. Um, I have uh, 15, I think, episodes. I'm I'm in the middle of putting up another one right now, and the new one is about sustainability in the business. How to say how to be sustainable for years and years and years in a in a business like ours, and yeah. that's my new podcast that I'm just putting up right now. But I'm really glad that I have inspired you and there's you know if you can create a legacy and that's what I'm working on now that's what's important to me yeah I my my shift my focus my my why has changed over the years and my why now is so different it's so different because I have grandkids now I'm yeah. older I'm in my 60s now so everything that I do I think about I'm leaving a legacy. I'm leaving a legacy for Cinegen, mm-hmm. yeah. and I'm leaving a legacy. I want I want distributors 50 years from now to know who I was at least, yeah. to know that I was one of the pioneers that started the business. Yeah. I know that that's going to happen because I'm in the history book, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I want my kids, my grandkids, I want to be a mentor to my grandchildren. I want to have them say when I'm gone, Remember when Mima said this and Mima did that and my Mima, you know, was a successful entrepreneur. My Mima taught other women how to be successful in their business. My Mima was a YouTube star. My Mima yeah. was this. My <laughs> Mima was that. You know, I want them to be proud of me and I want my what I stand for and my belief and everything that I do, I want it to be to where it goes into the next generations, and that's what I'm focused on now. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's that is awesome. I'm, you know, just as me personally and, and my family and and what you strive for, legacy and and that kind of stuff is is huge for me uh, as well because it's you know it's more than just you you know because you can build a successful business and you can make a lot of money, but you know, that those monetary things don't last forever, but legacies and lessons that you teach those that come after you and that kind of stuff is, mm-hmm. is the stuff that will really impact, you know, years and years after, uh, after we're no longer around. And so I think that's really cool as far as with the podcast, especially just trying to, you know, create that legacy in a way and just putting it out there because like you said, you never know who listens or who it helps or inspires and, and what's going on there. So I think that that mindset shift is, is, uh, is awesome. And I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure having grandkids helped, you know, with that legacy Mm -hmm. shift as well, as far as focusing on that too. That's exactly what it happened. When I had my first grandson, I'm like, wow, it's not just about me anymore because my kids were grown and on their own. But when you've got your first grandchild, some people, it doesn't matter. Some people, never change some people never think about those things and they just are pretty selfish their whole life but when you have grandkids and you realize that everything that you do you're being watched because my grandma was my mentor and my grandma taught me so many things about life and I didn't realize she was teaching me but she taught me a lot and I love those teachable moments those very special minutes or two minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes when you have with your children, it's one thing, but you're so busy just trying to get by the day Mm -hmm. that your grandchildren, you have a little bit more time to take with them. And in fact, my grandchildren are going to be here this afternoon. The littles, my littles, I call them (laughs) the two youngest and my son and, and his wife are coming to spend the weekend with us. And we have a weekend planned to create memories yeah and memories are super important memories are 
are always in your head. You never, you, no one can ever take those away. You, your house may burn down and all your pictures go away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The internet may go away. FaceTime or Facebook may go away. YouTube might not even be around when my grandkids are older because yeah. there'll be some fandangled new technology <laughs> that people yeah. are going to YouTube and think, holy cow, that's archaic. Yeah. But you know, the memory, no one can ever take that away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, well, before we start wrapping things up, um, I know you said you have a podcast, which I want everyone listening to this podcast to go check hers out because it was the inspiration for this one. And I love it just driving and listening. Um, I love when I drive to that's like my training and personal development time. Um, but could you share us a couple of tips about um, creating a sustainable business? You don't have to share everything that's going to be in your podcast, but just a couple of the highlights. I, I can. One of the biggest things is keep on keeping on. That's my thing. I ha I'm looking at it right now in my <laughs> office. I have it in huge letters on my wall. Yeah. Because you've got to keep going. You cannot quit. Mm -hmm. quitters quit but if you're not a quitter you have to keep going and sometimes you have to figure out a way to keep going because you feel stuck and when you feel stuck you've got to go somewhere you've got to hear from someone you don't ever go down you don't ever go to someone that's negative you don't mm -hmm. ever go to someone that's stuck to you yeah. you go to someone that's better than you that's been there, that's done it, you go to someone that has a positive attitude, you find a song, you find a YouTube video, you go to a class, you go to a Senegence event, you go somewhere where you can get motivated and get going again and get unstuck. Action equals results. Mm -hmm. When you take massive action, when you take action to get unstuck, you will get unstuck. It, it's a given. There's no doubt about it. So you have to keep on keeping on. Yeah. You can never give up. You cannot quit. Successful people find a way. Yeah. Unsuccessful people quit. Yeah. That is the key, the basis behind a successful, sustainable business. Yeah. Wow, that is, that's that, and just listening to you because you know you're you're so passionate about it because you lived it. You you've walked uh, as we've said, you know, during this the course of this interview, you got in on the ground level. You've lived, you know, synergence. You have seen it grow. You've seen it become what it is. So listening to you, uh, and coupled with your story, I, I know for me sitting here, I'm I feel like I am motivated to go take over the world and do something, ma take a massive action, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully everyone listening does too. Yeah. Um, so uh, Jerry, thank you so much uh, for, for taking time out of your schedule. I know you've got a, a lot going on and schedules can be crazy. Um, but it has been such an awesome time talking to you, learning about, some of the history of, of the business that I, mm -hmm. I certainly didn't know. For example, I always wondered, you know, what's the deal with those royal ranking names and why are those what they are? And you know <laughs> what I mean? As an outsider looking in, right. you always wonder, like, right. why do they choose Queen or Sapphire yeah. or whatever that is? You know, so, so um, no, yeah. yeah, that was awesome. So before we, we, we end it, um, for those listening that want to find uh, more information about you, follow you, your trainings, your tips, your videos, your podcast. Um, can you go ahead and share, you know, where you're at on social media and those those places so people can can get more Jerry and get more uh, motivated? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because um, we were talking about this at a training that I was at just recently. Yeah. And somebody said, have you ever Googled your name? And um, <laughs> I'm like, no, I have never Googled my name. And I told this to my trainee. I did a team training just the other night. And I said, have you guys ever Googled your name? Because if you Google your name, it'll kind of show you where you're at as far as yeah. social media. Yeah. Well, one of my team members Googled my name. And she's like, holy cow, you have pages <laughs> of stuff. 
and I'm like, well, that's just because I've been doing this a long time. But, you know, is everything good out there? Probably not. I don't know. I've, ne- I've never sat and looked yeah. at everything yeah. that is under my name, under Google. But I am on Facebook. I have my – I'm under Jerry Taylor hyphen Swade, but I'm also under Couple with the Queen and on – I'm, my business name, my personal business name is liquidmakeup.com, and so I have liquid makeup uh, on Instagram. I've got Couple with the Queen on Instagram. I've got my podcast, with, which is Couple with the Queen. Yeah. I have my business page. See, I had, I did not know what you're supposed to do because nobody told me, nobody right. taught us <laughs> how to start a business or, or you were supposed to have the same name for every single thing you do. I didn't know that because right. nobody taught me that. And so my Facebook, my business Facebook page is Kisses from Jerry and my personal page is Jerry Taylor Swade. And my other Facebook page is Couple with the Queen. And so I have all of these different things. I'm on Twitter. You know, I'm on, um, I'm on, I'm on, I have a blog on Tumblr. I have all that stuff. It's yeah. all out there. Yeah. So I always tell my customers, trust me, I'm, I, you can find me. Yeah. All you got to do is look at me. You'll yeah. find me. You know how to get a hold of me. And that's what I tell my customers. So, you know, uh-huh. um, but I, I, I still look forward. I, I'm not done. Yeah. I'm not done. And I look forward to what the future for me has, what it's going to look like. I don't know. My future is going to be different. I know, and I've always joked with Joni, that you you need to build a center home for all of the retired <laughs> distributors in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and it needs to be blue, and we need to have, like, blue hospital gowns and, yep. you know, bling on our walkers <laughs> yep. and things like that. And we've joked for years, but one of these days, I know, I, I know it's going to happen because mm-hmm. I see it. I'm either going to be walking across the stage in a walker or I'm going to be brought across the stage in a wheelchair and I'm still going to be there and I'm still going to be enjoying the successes of all those people out there in the audience yeah. and I want them to celebrate with me for all the time that I've been with Cinegents and all of the things that we have gone through together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Jay. This was a huge honor for us, for me. Um, and please, everyone listening, go um, find her, listen to her podcast. And, you know, if your downline is struggling or you know someone that's in a rut, just play this for them so they can get <laughs> motivated again and take action. So thank you so much, Jerry. We really um, this was just super special for us. All right. There you have it. Our interview with Jerry Taylor Swade. It was so awesome to be able to just sit and listen to story after story about how it you know was in the beginning of Cinegens, her experiences 19 years ago, getting to know Joni, you know, watching the business grow in front of her very eyes, becoming the first queen, how the names were, you know, uh, decided upon as far as the ranks and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely fascinating. Such an awesome awesome interview to be a part of and I hope you guys loved it I hope you guys gain inspiration from listening to it or your girls uh, rather uh, gain inspiration from listening to this interview and hearing how Jerry keeps going after 19 years and how her whys have changed but each why is is just as important as the last and and it is such uh, she is such an inspirational figure and person and I personally look forward to seeing her at seminar uh, when that time comes. So for the Lippy Supply team, for Madeline, I'm Josiah. Thank you guys so much for joining us again, and we'll see you soon right here on the Lippy Supply Podcast.